All right, guys. So throughout this tutorial, it's going to be quick, simple. I'm going to try to eliminate as much technicals as possible and get straight to the point. If you have an Arduino, you have a rotary encoder, a button, a switch, an LCD screen, this tutorial is made for you. You would only need your uh, external microcontroller and basic understanding of Arduino to get things up and running. So let's go ahead. We're going to download for free. Once the installation is downloaded and run, you're going to have your connector. Now, the first thing you're going to do is install Wasm. All right. Enter the path of your community folder here. You can select for the click confirm. Once that's done, I need you to check and make sure that in the community folder, you have bits and droids model and the Wasm model. Cool. Now, first things we're going to work on our standard inputs, inputs that you could send to the game that already exist in the connector and similarly outputs, and then we'll start with custom events. For the sake of this tutorial, what I will be building is a radio navigation controller. So I want to switch my, you know, my frequencies. I want to go between active and standby. I want to switch the integers and the decimals alike. So to do that, we will go ahead and open Arduino. So we're going to start with template one. I will upload template one, two, and three. Uh, basically, these will be boiler templates. You could just configure the pins of your Arduino, your encoder, and LCD. What you need for these tutorial is an encoder, an Arduino, and an LCD screen. So in its simplest of forms, we have our includes, we have our connector class, initial setup, and loop function to constantly send data. Now make sure also that you installed bits and droids from the library manager. Now, starting with custom events, input and outputs, the easiest way to know what exists is open up the class. You see send commands, and there's many. What I want to work with today is everything to do with the comms. All right. So this, this might be the most efficient way for you to understand what's pre-built as send commands and get commands. I personally find it extremely easy. Template 2 is standard. Template 2. So without wasting a lot of time as well on the code base itself, I'm, I'm you know, setting up the encoder, the class. I'm attaching a single click to switch between integers and decimals. I'm attaching a double click to swap between active and standby. I'm looping. Uh, and I'm controlling basically the rotation right or left. And if it was in the decimal, what to do? And if it was in the integer, what to do above? So when you want to send any value that currently exists, you're going to go connector.send and directly enter the function name. So send swap com one is here. And therefore, I'm going to understand that it's going to send and swap my first com. So connector.send is going to send this value and send different values based on different things I'm doing in the connector. Now let's go ahead and upload this file. Done. I'm going to go to my bits and droids, and I am going to start. Quick logs. And as I rotate my encoder, I can see my values being displayed. I single click, double click, switch values, double click again, switch values. Superb. Now let's also just directly open up Microsoft Flight Simulator and see if things are changing. I'm going to rotate right, switching decimals, rotate left, decreasing, single click, switching my integers, decrease, switch my integers, double click, swap the radio. Awesome. Looks like everything's working perfectly fine. Now, let's go ahead and output some events. For output, things work a little bit differently. I'm going to stop my file. And I am going to open up Arduino template three. In template three, I'm setting up my LCD screen because I want to display exactly what's showing in game as well. I am attaching similarly the code, and I have my send functions, which we have discussed. But now I have something called connector dot function. So get active com one. Similarly, I got this from here. Get active com one, and it returns active com one. So, and here's get standby com one. Cool. With this function, what we'll be doing, let's go ahead also and upload it. Com9. Great. Now, once we have outputs, we need to tell the connector that, hey, we're expecting to receive values and therefore send it to this microcontroller so we could process that data. So in this case, since we're working with default values, what we're going to do is we're going to go to bundle settings. I have two already. Let's go ahead and add another one. And we're going to call this radio nav 
the things that I want to work with is the navigation. And therefore, I'm going to select all these as ready-made outputs to send to your controller. I'm going to save, go to start. I'm going to select my output bundle, and I'm going to start the microcontroller. Great. Here we go. As you can see, I rotate right. I rotate left, single click, right, left, double click. Awesome. In six minutes, we have now external controllers that control our radio navigation frequency. Next up, we're going to do custom events. All right, now it's time to go ahead and add a custom event. So for the sake of this example, I want to control my strobe light. I want to, in the A320 and the overhead panel, we have a strobe, which is off, auto, and on. So I want to control these three different functions. So in my Arduino code, I am going to send connector.send 8003, 8002, and 8001. Each will be triggered based on where my switch is. All right. So Within the connector, I'm going to go to events. I'm going to go to custom output settings. I'm going to add event, add the ID 8001. Yes, the ID is already in use because it's pre-filled. I'm going to add my function, my RPN notation, which was found from the, you know, the, in my case, the FBW documentation. I'm going to add this description, strobes on, strobe on. It's an input command, and you can assign it to any planar category. Save. Once I'm done, I confirm that, okay, here's 8001 saying strobes is on, 8002, strobe is auto, and 83, uh, strobe is off. All right, once I'm done with here, always make sure to generate library, and then let's go ahead here. So my code for the light box is on a different Arduino, so this is COM4 with no outputs, and COM9 is the radio navigation, that we built previously. I'm gonna go ahead and start. Two green lights. Great. I'm gonna open up the logs, get that into screen, and recheck that our navigation is working perfectly fine. Single click, working perfectly fine. Double click is switching. Cool. Now let's see our strobe. Awesome. So sending to us, and as you can see, 8002, 8001, and 8003. So the co codes and IDs are being sent correctly. And let's go ahead and get our game in screen, reconfirming rotation of radio frequencies perfectly fine. And let's look up at the strobe. As I click up, down, auto, up, down. Boom. Now we have our custom input event controlling the aircraft. Finally, what we need to do is custom output events. For custom output events, similarly, you will work in this way. OK, let's say I want to output on my LCD screen the speed. So to do that in code, I'm going to tell my con connector the following, get output 8111, or get output 8112, or any event ID that you create. So what this is going to do, it's going to get the output and print it to the screen, connector.getoutput8111. Similarly, we're going to have to add that. Events, custom output, and add event. This time it's going to be 8111. Yes, because it is in use, we're going to add code which is going to be this description, FCU speed. It is an output value, and I'm expecting an integer to come in this output, and I want to update it every one. Generic, save. Once you're done, you should also see it updated with your ID, 8111. Similarly, we'll create the output in which the connector is expected to receive. So we're going to go to bundle settings again. I'm going to create a new one called autopilot. Edit. This time we're going to go to WASM because these are custom events. And this was the command that we entered as an output value. I'm going to check it. I'm going to save. I'm going to
going to go to start and I'm going to assign autopilot so that the print function or the output is being sent to COM9, which is my Arduino that we configured the radio navigation frequency. Clicking start, if everything's going according to plan, then you should now be able to see the output of the speed on your LCD as well. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it clarified a couple of things. Keep building, show us what you're building. We're super excited to see what you can get out of this connector. Thanks guys and talk soon.